someone who has already had a great uh, uh, last month has been the indecent stock. 20% higher in just one month. I think uh, mm. it was 1480 at the start of the month and it is 1780 <laughs> yeah. when yeah. we ended the month. And if you went a little further behind, I mean, it was even, I think, below 1400 in the month of December or something. And the look at the way the stock has charged. It's not one month. You just pull up a six month and you will know what I'm talking about. It's just climbed uh, relentlessly this year and in the month of March itself. Uh, to tell us what's happening in that stock, uh, is the big man himself, uh, Ramesh Sopti, Managing Director and CEO of Indescent Bank. Good morning, Mr. Sopti. There's so much to ask you, especially because the banking sector itself is embarking morning. on a lot of new things uh, this morning uh, with uh, corporate exposures uh, as mm. well as external benchmarks. Uh, but let me first start with uh, yes. the news at home. You know, one of the things doing the round about this rally is that you are set to continue even longer. Is there any hint that uh, the age limit is going to go up mm -hmm. from 70 to 75? Because that's the Companies Act uh, age limit. Well, you know, there are only rumors sort of floating uh, around. We don't have any specifics around that. And I think these rumors uh, were probably uh, instigated by the fact that there was an amendment to the Companies Act, that particular section, you know. Mm. There's one section which says that the CEO's uh, age limit is 70. Unless shareholders decide through a special resolution, it okay. can cross 70. Yeah. And that was amended about four months ago or five months ago to say you don't need a special resolution, it can be an ordinary resolution. And I think that's the sort of uh, thing. And plus, there have been debates and discussions here and there, and why should you have an age limit yeah. different for banks as from companies? Okay, that's Mrs. about it. Mr. Sopi, good morning. I tell you why this rumor, uh, you know, is now looking very strong, is because uh, you know you have, uh, of course, Mr. Aditya Puri as well, who's at the helm of HDFC Bank, and perhaps uh, uh, you know the Reserve Bank believes that uh, two large banks. Uh, perhaps don't right now have a good transition in place or uh, the best transition in place uh, for such large balance sheets. So perhaps uh, in the interest of the country, it's, it's, it, it's, it's good if, uh, you know, both Mr. Puri and you continue at the helm of the two large banks. No, also, Mr. Suttagar resigned. Yeah, so Mr. Suttagar, gave... I didn't want to put that in, but yeah, I mean, that was one yeah, thought process. But have, yeah. has someone written, sir, from the bank, uh, either your bank, from your board, or from HDFC Bank board, uh, is there something in the works is what we wanted to know? No, see, uh, I think both of us have uh, time to go. Okay. I mean, I have to go up to March 2020 and I think Aditya has uh, even more time mm. uh, till the middle of uh, next year. So I think these are early days. Uh, if there are debates and discussions uh, at board levels and other than all, you know, I'm not uh, fully aware. But um, I think uh, both of us would be very happy to continue, at least speaking for myself, I'm quite happy to uh, continue. <laughs> I still love coming to work every day. <laughs> and um, I'm fine working uh, longer. Yes, yes. yes. your sure. investors also love yeah. that, uh, love to hear this from you. Yeah, I'm sure your shareholders <laughs> will be the happiest to know that you're going to continue. <laughs> Mr. Sopti, good morning and thank you as always for joining us. Now to business. Um, you know, first I wanted Morning. to ask you about the Bharat financial merger. Mm. Just a couple of more details on what's happening there. By when will that come through? And, you know, once it does happen, what are the benefits that the bank could see in terms of lower funding costs, you know, improvement in the capital efficiency, etc.? Yes, so we are, uh, I would say, the last furlong, not the last mile <laughs> of the, the merger. All clearances uh, and all regulatory clearances are there. Now we are in the NCLT and a final order has to be passed for the, for the merger, for uh, which there is a date now, which is uh, 10th of April. And uh, post that, I think within a period of uh, 10 to 15 days, the whole process is then completed, so that the merger. The merger date, of course, is effective 1st January 2018. Mm. So irrespective of whether it happens today or in April, the effective date is so the uh, last year's results, last quarter will be rewritten and the full year results of Bharat will, uh, will consolidate in our results uh, this year. More importantly, I think is the, uh, the synergies that will happen as a consequence of the merger. So we, we have classified them as what we call um, uh, presumptive synergies and non-presumptive synergies. Non-presumptive synergies are very evident. Uh, the 
cost of funding for Bharat goes down by one and a half to two percent on day one because we will repay all other lenders. Uh, the risk weightages fall from 100 to 75 percent in our books, and the entire portfolio is is private sector. So we'll be uh, massively excess uh, excessive on uh, on private sector lending. I think these are these are what I call non-presumptive synergies. And the presumptive synergies are what uh, we have been working together with them as a BC for the last seven, eight months. And, uh, you know, a lot of that around, uh, is revolves around raising uh, uh, deposits uh, from customers, mm. giving them facilities um, at the village level, and uh, those sort of things. And they are showing very good and very promising results. Oh. Uh, you know, the whole concept of banking outlets has changed. Uh, RBI has new guidelines. So, a lot of these Kirana stores and all are now becoming uh, sub BCs and therefore banking outlets. So it's a very, very vast uh, opportunity. And uh, we are very excited that we roll it out over the next uh, two, three years. An appropriate time, I must say. Uh, uh, Mr. Zopti, I wanted to ask you about loan growth now. It was a steamy almost 35% that you all reported uh, in third quarter. Uh, was fourth quarter as good, especially because my sense is that you are buying up or at least getting NBFC business? No, you see, uh, we aren't buying so many of these portfolios, uh, if, if that is what is being indicated. Mm. There is a, 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 a intrinsic growth that we are seeing across our entire loan cycle, mm. from microfinance to very large uh, public sector and uh, PSU accounts. Uh, vehicle finance is, is growing at 28, 29%. Non-vehicle retail is growing at 28, 29%. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we will stabilize at anything between 25 and 30%. That's our run rate for the last 11 years. Mm. Uh, good times, bad times, etc. So this quarter also, I think we'll have a very healthy uh, sort of growth uh, okay. uh, in the loan book. In that it's context? We're not, it's not because we are buying. Oh, right. Market share is shifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I meant, more that. I meant more that. I meant more that. Because uh, we have taken market share in almost every vehicle category. Okay. okay. Yes. You know, in every, almost every vehicle category, we have taken market share. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, sir, I just want to ask you in that context, this uh, uh, new rule of the Reserve Bank that kicks in today, that uh, corporate exposure, uh, a bank can't be exposed to any group uh, beyond 25% uh, of its uh, eligible capital. Uh, uh, how do you see that panning out? Because there's some confusion about what do you yes. mean by uh, dependent companies. Uh, are we all clear, good to go? Yes, I think so. Uh, so, you know, the change is really that instead of uh, using uh, your total capital, uh, the definition is being now uh, built around your tier one capital. Mm. So, you know, if, if your tier one is uh, very close to your total capital, you are hardly affected. Mm -hmm. But if a large component of your uh, CRAR is from tier two, etc., then I think uh, banks will have to uh, rethink that through. As far as we are concerned, for instance, you know, the single borrower exposure now goes up to 20 plus yes. 5%, which is 25% mm -hmm. uh, with board approval of the tier one capital. So mm -hmm. we actually, our exposures increase. And the total exposures are restricted to 25% of tier one. Mm. So some uh, readjustments. I think the, the theme behind this particular uh, change is essentially for banks to now raise better quality capital. Okay. Which means the, if you want to lend more, you must have a higher tier, tier one capital. Mm. Okay. I think so that's, that's the good rationale behind it. Mm. Sure. If, mm. No, uh, uh, please continue, uh, Mr. Sobti, you're making this point. You, I mean, uh, you, you're going to develop that point. Will there be more adjustments to be made by your bank or other banks? No. Say for us, it's it's. Uh, I think it's. Um, it doesn't make any impact. I, as I said, mm, sure. uh, tier, uh, the uh, single borrower used to be 15 percent. Now goes to 20 percent uh, with 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 board approval. 25 percent. So actually, we can do more mm. uh, for single borrowers. And uh, right from the beginning, you know, we we've, uh, we have sort of fallen back more on uh, core tier one uh, rather than uh, tier two capital. So I think, but I think the system may have to do some adjustments uh, as a consequence of this thing because a lot of the state-owned banks also had, you know, uh, tier two. Uh, so maybe some adjustments uh, may be needed there. Okay. Mr. Sobti, what's the latest on the island FS issue? Because uh, one reason your stock had underperformed uh, 
was because of this and the fact that you had perhaps not fully provided for? Uh, uh, where are things right now? No, see, uh, as far as we're concerned, we started providing well ahead of the banking system. So we provided quarter two, we provided quarter three, and whatever is residual uh, that we think is necessary will be provided in quarter four. So uh, as far as we are concerned, we are going to leave uh, ILFS behind, and uh, we'll provide enough and more so that there is hope for write backs in the future, especially from the operating companies where we have seen uh, good valuations as a consequence of the bidding uh, process that has happened. So uh, um, we staggered it, we staged it, uh, and there's a reason behind uh, that particular uh, staging, because we wanted to know exactly how much is needed. So you know, it's not shooting arrows in the dark. Right. Now we have a very firm fix on uh, what is to be provided, both for the holding company and as for the operating company. And as I said, we start 1st April uh, with a run rate, which is really our actual run rate, uh, leaving ILFS behind. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sopti, you spoke about a 25 to 30 percent uh, loan growth that you're looking at overall. But what about the commercial vehicle business in particular? Because 20 percent of your loan book comes from CV financing, and there is a big slowdown underway over there. Uh, how much could growth slow down too for uh, financiers like yourself? And how long do you think it would take before normalcy returns? So, you know, uh, um our growth in this uh, commercial vehicle sector in the last two quarters also where, where there is talk about a slowdown, there's some anecdotal evidence uh, of the slowdown. Uh, we, our growth has been close to 30% in commercial vehicles. And uh, we have uh, taken market share, as I said. Mm -hmm. So uh, people are you know, looking at uh, you know, the wrong number as far as commercial vehicles are concerned. They look at number of vehicles sold. I think that's, that's not so important as the tonnage is sold. Mm -hmm. You know, an average truck used to be 25 tons. Now it's about 31 tons. Mm -hmm. So with the same number of vehicles, the tonnage is more, therefore your loan disbursements are higher. And of course, you know, I think some fallouts are happening of the NBFC sector as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have increased our market share now to over 12% on, on the commercial vehicle sector. Okay. And uh, I think that uh, because this is the year preceding the Bharat uh, 6 emission norms coming in from 1st April next year. So this year actually should see a surge in the CVs because people will buy the old model because the new model is a massive change of the engine and all and therefore much more expensive. So uh, I would imagine that the second half of this year you could probably see a little bit of a surge on commercial vehicle uh, financing and sales. Mm. Actually, this is a big learning. Uh, I mean, I think the slowdown is being overstated by observers uh, by looking at the number and not uh, the tonnage. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Sopti. Uh, let me also now come to the cost Sorry. of money. Uh, today, uh, ICSI cut MCLR by five basis points. There's, just tell us what are you expecting on April 4th from RBI. But more importantly, our poll threw up a rate cut of 25 basis. Will that get passed on? Uh, or is there still too much of a battle for deposits? You know, see, uh, there is money available. Uh, it's the cost of money that's, uh, that's being talked about. I mean, yes. the RBI has done almost three and a half lakh crores of uh, OMOs mm -hmm. and opened another window, which probably is going to be a much more sustainable window, mm -hmm. you know, the, through the swap route, et cetera. So, yeah. there, so what has happened is that, uh, there, you know, there is a built-in lag in the repricing. So, you know, today we are talking about transmission of rates on the way down. But, you know, we should have also talked about transmission of rates on the way up. Mm -hmm. uh, on the way up also, transmission did not happen with the same sort of, uh, you know, uh, agility. Mm. And you saw margins shrinking a little bit. <laughs> so that cycle will now turn. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, MCLR certainly, I mean, uh, even our MCLR was reduced by five basis points uh, the last time we reviewed it. Mm. So, um, but cost of deposits is going down. I mean, I have not seen such a, a, a healthy... Uh, March for a long, long time. I mean, CD rates, you know, fell by 55 or 60 basis points mm. uh, uh, during this period, January to March. So, uh, I think the rates are going down, and it will only be natural that transmission uh, transmission will happen. Uh, 
Uh, of course, there's a new experiment with the uh, benchmarking the depot, yeah. uh, rate, external benchmarking rate. Okay. But uh, irrespective of that, I think uh, I think rates will certainly move down, and this trigger of another 25 basis points maybe in the April policy probably will hasten the process. Hasten by how much, sir? Is it another five basis? Because last time's 25, I think, across the board uh, yielded about five to ten max. So will this cut also mean another five to ten? I mean, immediately, okay. lag. Okay. But overall, I think if you take it over a period of, say, three months or six months, mm. it will get fully passed on. Otherwise, we are non-competitive. Okay. okay. And is external benchmarks is not there from today, right? Uh, you are still awaiting uh, uh, more details from RBI. See, the external benchmarking, uh, RBI's uh, original indication was that it should be done for the uh, SME, SME sector. Um, but uh, one large bank has uh, already benchmarked both sides of the balance sheet, actually. Uh, overdrafts on the one side and, uh, and sales bank on the other side, which I think for the banking system is, uh, will create more stability and more agility in passing on rates. But from the customer's point of view, you know, it may bring a little bit of volatility, especially for sales bank customer. And uh, we know that uh, uh, I think the association of uh, uh, of savers and depositors have mm. already made some some uh, uh, sort of uh, pleadings with the with the Bank of India that that will create a little bit of volatility in their hands also. Mm. Mm. Uh, sir, uh, you know what about asset quality itself? I mean, the entire the industry has been going through some challenges, and Indusind Bank as well. In the last quarter, saw uh, slippages zoom quite a bit to almost 800 odd crores. What kind of trends do you see in asset quality in the quarters to come? You know, I think uh, for the full year this year, if you uh, take out ILFS uh, and ring fence that, mm. our credit costs are going to come down lower than uh, last year's. Oh. Last year's was 62 basis points, and this year we expect maybe in the, in the mid-50s. So the rest of the book is, is, is pretty stable, mm. and uh, I think uh, there's a normal business as usual sort of credit cost. So we are not seeing any, any particular... Uh, peaks in any of the credit costs. I think we see stability and over the next few quarters also our line of sight is quite clear that uh, the book is, uh, is behaving and is stable. Okay, uh, so just one, one more question from my end. I mean, coming back to the first point you made where you said that you're willing and happy to stay on, I'm sure the board has considered that as well. Uh, is it safe to assume that the process of finding a successor has been put on hold, at least for now? No, I think uh, for us, you know, I've said that the process started, for me at least, it started uh, almost four, five years ago. Okay. When at the age of 64, it was uncertain whether 65 would be crossed. Mm. So, you know, uh, succession is a, is, a, is, a, is a, it's a daily process, you know, it is a subtle daily process. And uh, there are many people running in the process and then one of them wins. Mm. That process is not going to stop, be stopped. Okay. Uh, until there's absolute certainty about uh, about the extension, mm. and I think we are ready uh, uh, with that part also, and uh, hopefully uh, that will play out mm -hmm. towards the end of the year. All right, I don't think your shareholders want that to play out. In any case, uh, Mr. Sopi, uh, you know now it looks like the Bharat Financial uh, buyout is getting digested as you uh, indicated uh, uh, there is more uh, there are more savings accounts that you are able to open uh, will you now look around for more buys uh, there are a lot of nbfc opportunities aren't there yes you know uh, lata the only uh, criteria that we have for uh, buying is that it should you know give you some sort of a domain leadership and should give you some sort of specialization. So it's not just accruing assets, you know. Um, you also mentioned we grew assets at 30% or thing. So it's not accruing assets. Mm. It should do you something, uh, give you something by way of specialization, something by way of creating a little domain where, you know, you can take domain leadership, etc. For instance, microfinance was one of those domains and okay. diamond financing was the other domain. Yeah. Vehicle financing is another domain. Mm. Like that, if, okay. if there's an opportunity, uh, find a domain. Certainly, for instance, uh, wealth management is, is a domain that we are very, very keen on and we've launched 
our own organic wealth management platform, uh, soft launch. That's one uh, certainly area that we are very, very keenly watching. So oh. you will buy something on wealth management? Uh, you know, we, we, we launched uh, our own, uh, we branded and launched uh, this thing. Uh, it's not banking the wealthy, it's banking the well-off. Okay. You know, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a subtle distinction between that, <laughs> the banking the well-off. We have launched it. Mm. And in that area, if there are this thing, we are more than happy to, uh, to look, at, uh, okay. look at acquisitions. Okay, on, on that so positive note, sir, thank you very much for joining us. And here's wishing you all the very best uh, in FI20 and hope to continue to see you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <coughs> All right, uh, Mr. Sokhdi, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, we need to take a break. Before we do that, just take a look at Engineers India Limited. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, breakouts happening in the PSUs. Uh, and uh, this is one stock where you've seen quite a bit of accumulation. Just seeing a fresh breakout right now. So very interesting trends happening. In fact, we'll discuss this and a lot of other stocks on the other side of this break. Our technical experts will join us for fresh trades.